Because of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carroll Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. Friends, as you know, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is giving daily enjoyment to millions of people all over America, in offices and factories, on farms and ranches, in mines and oil fields. Folks find that chewing Wrigley's Spearmint helps them feel better and work better. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad that their product is proving helpful and enjoyable to so many people, and they're glad, too, that they're able to bring you Life with Luigi, because they know it's the kind of a radio program that millions of Americans enjoy. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes about his adventures in America to his Mama Basco in it. Dear Mama Mia, <laughs> every day I'm going to get to feel more and more like the American. Oh, you should have seen me, Mama Mia. I'm a dress like American, I'm eat like American, I'm a talk like American. And I'm even to learn the biggest American I have it. How to read the newspaper and I walk across the street in the same time. <laughs> Has the one thing about the American Mamma Mia? He's got a big heart. And every time he's eating a restaurant, he's a leave a ten percent of tip for a waiter. And this I'm always a do. Just a little while ago I'm had a coffee and a donut in a restaurant. Check was a ten cent, but I'm a real American. I'm a leave eleven. <laughs> I'm going to show you how much American I'm going to become, Mamma Mia. I'm even interested myself in a baseball. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm going to remember the first time in Chicago, I'm going to thought the man who sells the newspaper was running a laundry on the side. Because all the time everybody is asking, how's the White Sox a donor? <laughs> and then, Mamma Mia, I'm going to get a letter. And it's making me feel so proud. Here was a letter from, from Antique Dealers of America. Association I'm a joining last year, and they say they're going to have a big dance in a hotel, and I'm got a card that's inviting me and a Mrs. Abasco, Mr. and a Mrs. Abasco, but I must have been mistaken, this uh, Mrs. Abasco, because I guess they don't know you're still in Italy. <laughs> but then I'm realizing that they must have mean my wife. Yeah, me and my wife. It's a, it's a feel funny, not to... Luigi, my friend. <laughs> hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. What's that letter you got there, little banana nose? Oh, that's, a, that's an invitation, Pasquale, to dance. Yeah, from my association, Antique Delays of America. Hey, that's wonderful, little Luigi. You just take a rosa, and when you two get out on the dance floor, everybody's going to be watching. <laughs> Well, if I'm going to go with the rest on the dancer floor, they got to watch you because there's going to be no room in the dance. <laughs> Besides, I'm not going to bring a rosa. This invitation is for me and Mrs. Abasco. Well, that's nothing to two dollars and the ten minutes in the city hall. I couldn't fix up. <laughs> what do you say, little cabbage puss? No. That's a no answer. Give me one good reason. Well, I'm, I'm going to give you three good reasons, Pasquale. First the place, I'm a donor love Ross enough. Come on, I get down to the real reason. Second the place, second the place, I'm not ready to get the married. Stop the stalling, and come to the real reason. <laughs> Third the place, she's a too fat for me. Where? Where's she fat? In the first, the second, and the third the place. <laughs> Papa Squeak, I brought you to America, remember? I set you up in this antique shop, remember? I lend you money when you go broke. I do a million things for you, and why? You think it because I got a bigger heart? No, because you got a bigger daughter. <laughs> and I don't try to scare me into taking a Rosa Pasquale because you can't. It's a free country. I'm going to take anybody I'm going to want. Luigi, it's a break of my heart to hear you talking like that. I guarantee you, if you marry Rosa, just the once... She's going to lose a hundred pounds from jumping with a happiness. No, no, not, not the Rosa. If she gets married, then she's going to be happy, and then she's going to gain a weight. All right, so marry her and make her miserable. <laughs> no, Pasquale, 
We're wasting the time. Besides, I'm gonna go to my night school class. Uh, wait, wait, Luigi. Think over. What if Rosa was to promise you herself uh, she would take off her weight in time for a dance? That's impossible. You don't believe her, huh? What do you believe if you heard it straight from the horse's mouth? <laughs> you mean Rosa herself? Uh-huh. I'm gonna call her in, Luigi. Rosa! 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 You call me Papa! <laughs> yes, my little buttercup. Rosa, Luigi's going to a big antique dance soon. He has in two weeks. Uh-huh. Rosa, how would you like to go to this antique dance? But, Papa, I don't like to dance with antiques. <laughs> oh, Rosa, Luigi said he might be willing to marry a certain party if they didn't mind a hundred pounds of being reduced. But, Papa, why should Luigi want to reduce a hundred pounds? Not a Luigi, you! <laughs> oh, Rosa, go back to the kitchen. All right. No, just to go back. To stay out of the kitchen. All Goodbye. right. Goodbye, Papa. Goodbye, Luigi. Goodbye. <laughs> Well, Pasquale, see, you just got your answer. Now I'm going to go to the night school. Now, wait, wait, Luigi. Don't go yet. You can help Rosa out. Take her with you. Let her mix her with the people. That's going to make her such a big improvement. After all, how much can she learn hanging around with ignorant pussies like you and me? <laughs> Pasquale, don't drag me into it. Goodbye. No, wait, take her, Luigi. You're going to be surprised at what a big impression she's going to make on that dance floor. You're going to be surprised, I tell you. Impression on a dancer floor. She'll make a big one. That's only if she's a fool on it. Don't worry about it. We're going to have a picnic next time. All right, quiet class, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basso? Well, I wonder what's keeping him away. Mr. Horowitz? How should I know what's keeping Luigi away? I was just continuing the roll call. Oh, please, uh, please excuse me for being late, Miss Spalding, but, but my countryman Pasquale is uh, calling me again, uh, Ramirez, uh, because I'm going to want to make a Mrs. Bross and Mrs. Basco after she's uh, going to dance with the antique in my association. <laughs> oh, Luigi, are you for shimmers? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, please. Let's have some quiet. Uh, and if no one else wants to return to the lessons, I do. <laughs> Look at him. He can't wait to make a pest of himself with his intelligence. All right, Mr. Schultz, that'll be all. Class, I asked you to study the chapter on Andrew Jackson in your history books. Now, let's see how much you've learned. Mr. Horowitz, please tell us when and where Andrew Jackson was born. Certainly. Jackson was born in America. Uh, what part? All of him. <laughs> No, no, Mr. Horowitz. What part of America? What state? Oh, oh. North Carolina. Go on. What year? What year what? What year was he born? You mean Andrew Jackson? Mr. Horowitz, are you stalling? Stalling? This filibuster will make his story. <laughs> All right, Mr. Schultz, you may answer the next question. Huh? By what nickname was Andrew Jackson known? Ah, well, that was something with uh, old... Uh, Old Hickory? Are you sure? Am I right? <laughs> yes. Then I'm sure. <laughs> now, let's continue, please. Mr. Olson, can you tell us something about Andrew Jackson's early life? Oh, that would be my extreme pleasure. Uh, would you like me to talk about his marriage, or go back to his first job, or further back to his school days, or before that? <laughs> Why don't you start with the name of the hospital he was born in <laughs> and how much he weighed? <laughs> Schultz, will you stop acting like a boar? <laughs> Olsen, when you stop acting like a boar? Another remark like that, Mr. Schultz, and you may leave. Continue, Mr. Olsen, anywhere you wish. Thank you. Andrew Jackson was a major general in the United States Army. He won several gigantic battles against the British and the Indians. And in 1828, he became president. I might also add, Andrew Jackson instituted the spoil system in politics. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, Mr. Olson. Uh, Mr. Basco, what brought on the spoil system? The... Huh? 
Uh, what started the spoil system? That the refrigerator, sir? <laughs> I like about Luigi. He doesn't say much, but when he does, it's a lollapalooza. <laughs> I'm a spoiling. I'm, I'm a sorry, I'm a spoiling, but, but I'm, I'm a no can think today. Not no can, Mr. Basco. I can't think today. Oh, you too, huh? <laughs> I was correcting your English, Mr. Basco. It's abominable. Now, now you see, you, you agree with the Pasquale. I'm, I'm making it amorous. What the right time I got to turn down a rosa to the dancer without, without even a thinking? Oh, just a minute, Mr. Basco. I was a little hard on you. Yeah, take it easy, you little Wiener schnitzel. <laughs> you once took rosa to a dance, if I remember. Yeah, I'm going to remember, too. All the night, I felt like I was trying to push the Empire State to building it back at two inches. <laughs> All right, if you remember that, then why are you angry with yourself for refusing to take it this time? Well, I heard you because... Because I'm a said no, I didn't mean it because she's a too fat. No. It's because, uh, well, uh, well, with all those important people at the dance, I, I was afraid that she was going to say the wrong things, and, and I couldn't help her because I'm so stupid in myself. Mr. Vasco, I'm sorry. Really, I, I want to apologize for making you feel this way. After all, you're making every effort to improve. You're going to night school. At least you're facing your problem honestly. Why don't you tell Pasquale that's how you feel about his doctor? You will feel better and Pasquale will know. I think, I think you're right. <laughs> I'm feeling better already just to thinking about it. Sure, I'm going to tell it, Pasquale. Luigi, I'll be sure you don't hurt his feelings. Yeah, you just got to handle the whole thing with tact. That's all. Tact? What should I say, sir? Well, uh, you say, uh, Pasquale, uh, I would like to take Rosa to the dance, but I can't for a lot of reasons. Uh, first, she's too fat. <laughs> and second, she don't dress right. <laughs> and third, she's always laughing. Uh, and fourth, she always says the wrong thing at the wrong time. And fifth, him and Luigi, you take her. She's going to be the life of the party. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm, I'm lucky to talk with you. If you don't mind, stranger, I ain't not speaking at times with you. <laughs> He's about to rush. Well, if a set of the party is willing to talk, another set of the party is willing to listen. All right. To start with it, Pasquale, please believe me when I'm going to say I owe you a whole lot for bringing me to America and helping me so much. Keep talking. And there's nothing I would like better than to bring you good news. What's the good news? I'm still not going to take a rosa to the dance. <laughs> Luigi, you take the longest road to go nowhere. There's the door. See how quick you can get on the other side of it without opening it up. No, but, but wait a minute, Pasquale. Let me finish. I, I like the Rosa. Really. She's a sweet and a kind, but... But, but well... Well, if I'm a stupid, at least I'm going to try to do better. I'm going to try to dress better. I'm a, Well, Rosa is just a Rosa. She's a do nothing, or she's a just stay rusty, and then maybe someday she's a gonna double herself. Hmm. <laughs> That's the sound of spoken from the heart. That's right, it is. Luigi, I tell you what I do. I make a bargain with you. The dance is gonna begin for two weeks yet. I'm gonna concentrate everything that the money can buy on Rosa for the next two weeks. If it don't make her no change, then it don't take her. But if it does, will you take her? Sure, but, but what can you do? Everything. I read about a charm course. I'm going to get somebody to learn English. She's going to reduce everything. All right, Pasquale. I'm going to wait in the scene, and I hope it'll work. It's got to work. Money can do anything. And believe me, when I get it through with her, roses are going to look better than Max a factor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I talked to you like this, Pasquale, because, well... We really love each other, huh? For me. For me, you... You're even going to change your daughter. That's the right, Luigi. For you, I'm going to create a Frankenstein. Before we return to life with Luigi, we'd like to mention that delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is not only good, but also good for you. 
When you're feeling tense or you're working at a hard, fast pace, it's really a comfort to chew on a good, smooth piece. The easy, pleasant chewing helps relieve that feeling of pent-up tension and gives you satisfaction. Then, too, the lively, long-lasting flavor of Wrigley Spearmint helps keep your mouth moist and fresh. So you see, that little stick of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum is not only enjoyable, but also helpful to you. Try it and see for yourself. Keep a package of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum handy and enjoy chewing a stick from time to time every day. And now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. Well, Mamma Mia, there's a lots of crazy things that happened in the last ten days since the Pasquale's promised to make her us into new girl. First, he's put on a 14-a-day diet. She should have lose weight, but if I'm no Rosa, she's going to take a 14 a years. Then also, he's bought a special exercise of things for her, like, like bicycle, to stand still while you ride them away on it. And also, Pasquale is a higher special lady. Yeah, she's a come around to, to, to massage your Rosa in a pinch and a rub her. <laughs> Mamma mia, Rosa's got so much to pinch and a rub, I think of Pasquale better get a three ladies. <laughs> But I must, must be doing good because all the day I'm hearing how to scream Western Uncle Pietro as a goat when he's got his tail caught in a fence. <laughs> and then also, Mamma Mia, is, is the funny little fellow with the eyeglasses. He's always coming around the house. Yeah. Oh, excuse me, Mamma Mia. I'm seeing him now. He's going to the Pasquale's store. Wait. I'm going to ask him what's happening. Hey, <laughs> Did you call me, sir? Yeah. Uh, hello. Hey, I'm a Luigi Basco. Yeah, I'm a good friend of Pascali. Uh, he's, uh, he's a higher you for his daughter, huh? Why, yes, I'm her tutor. Her tutor? Yes. What are you toot? <laughs> I'm her teacher. Yeah, I know, I know. You think I'm going to get around with too? All right, so what do you teach to her? Oh, everything. The languages. Grace. The dance. Toys. Oh, she's a delightful creature. Mm. <laughs> that girl has big potentialities. Oh, yeah, she's a plenty bigger, all right, but, uh, but uh, maybe, maybe with a diet, uh, she's uh, going to look uh, nice and uh, better, huh? Oh, she looks splendid now. And I happen to like fat girls myself. Ah. Oh. Now, Mr. Putter, how much should do you weigh? Ninety pounds. <laughs> uh, I, I suppose opposites attract. I, I, I tell you, watching that girl dance, is a revelation. She has rhythm, feeling, and a certain likeness of foot. Well, it, it's simply poetry in notion. Yeah, but if she's ever step on a poetry, is it going to stop with the motion? <laughs> I beg your pardon. Did you say you were a, a friend? A f- well, sure, I'm a friend. What's the matter? You, you don't believe in me? Russ is a tooth in the way you're just because of me. Oh, good heavens. I can't see why. You! <laughs> I must be going. Mamma mia, if he should tell the truth, then... Luigi, my fellow booze. Oh, hello, sir. Luigi, tell me, who was that strange little character you were talking to? That's the fellow who's a tooth in the rust. Uh-huh. He looks skinny enough to be a vet, <laughs> Ach, Luigi, it's all over the neighborhood what Pasquale is doing with Rosa, just so you should take her to the dance. Diction lessons, dancing lessons, weight reducing. I sure see you. Do you think it's possible uh, to change a person in a two weeks? Why not? Ach, my Luigi. You know, I think you're a little afraid you might like the new Rosa. Well, how, how am I can tell? The way he's a hider, you would think she was the atom bum. <laughs> you should see how much Marley talks. Hundreds of dollars he's got invested in charm specialists, makeup experts, two dogs, figure specialists. Rosa ain't a girl no more. She's a project. <laughs> but, Isn't no possible if somebody could have changed the way he's a walk and a talk or, or a laughter? And you know how Rosa is a laughter. Like the 12 o'clock lunch with <laughs> But she ought to be busy. When you see the new Rosa Thursday, you might decide the change is wonderful. President? Uh-huh. Pasquale was in my store for something, and he told me that's the unveiling. 
Two o'clock Thursday. All his friends are going to be there. Maybe he'll send you later today. Yeah, well, you're not sure. I'm going to have a short of since the day. That's probably the best bad idea. Who knows? Maybe he's going to see a girl who's beautiful, smart, charming, and attractive. <laughs> ah, stop being such a pessimist, Louise. Smile. Be like me. Always happy. Always laughing. <laughs> <laughs> my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> yeah, but uh, how much longer are we going to wait for this guy? Don't be in such a hurry, little pumpkin ahead. Calm down or relax. <laughs> After all, the roasters have got to please with the crowd. It's either got to be good and ready. Is she ready, Mr. Tudor? I'll say she is. Hey, all right. All right, everybody, get ready now. Close your mouth and open your eyes. You will now see the greatest change that's ever took a place since the Dr. Jekyll has turned into Mrs. Hyde. <laughs> Rosa! 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 Me, <laughs> Pasquale. Pasquale, since the wedding, you changed the name from Pasquale to Pesci. Pesci? Pesci speaks for father. That's the right. The top is the tailor and the mom is the maid. <laughs> <laughs> now who's going to stoop for the booze? Well, say yourself, because the roster don't look a different even you don't recognize it. Yeah, but she's a sweet. She's a smart than you are, too. A roast is something that's not educational for Louise. Indubitably. In a hope? In a hope? Hope it's ugly? No. In a... In a... Boob... Boob it's ugly? No, no. You're the indubitably. <laughs> it's that in a dubitably. Uh, even I don't know what it's like. <laughs> You see, Luigi, she talks in such a high-class English, and now nobody understands her. Now, Rosa... Peter, please, call me Rosette. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Rosette. Now I'm going to show you something, Luigi. Rosette, say something Italian for Luigi. All right. Favorisca, farmi, altri, guanti. Pasquale, what's that? <laughs> Luigi, for the first time in your life, you hear an Italian with a Harvard accent. Mamma mia. Hello. I'm in a Rosette. Well, you sound very good, but... But I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm didn't hear you laugh today. Don't you feel good? Luigi, there's a time for laughter, and there's a time for serious things. Don't you think... Well, stop standing there with your mouth open and say something to the lady. Uh, 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 how, how do you like my new coiffure? What? Oh, you don't. <laughs> how do you like her new dress? <laughs> Peter, you amaze me. I'm talking about my upsweep. Oh, Luigi, tell you like her the way she sweeps up. <laughs> Rosa, you always was a good in the kitchen. Luigi, I was looking for you. <laughs> is that you, Rosa? Please, my name is Rosette. Rosette? Yeah, yeah, sure, so she's a change her name. In the future, kindly call me Rosette, Mr. Schultz. Mark Schultz, in the future, kindly call me Schultzette. <laughs> <laughs> well, Schultz, what do you say? Is it some difference, huh? Class, a taste, a breeding, a weight? Well, I got to agree about the class, taste, breeding. But about the weight? Dunder und Blitzen! <laughs> so what? Uh, Luigi didn't care about the weight. No, no, you're right, Pasquale. You're absolutely right. I didn't. That's a words like from a true gentleman, Luigi. He's going to keep us a bargain. He's taking a rosa to the dance. No, no, Pasquale. I'm not the taking a rosa to the dance. What? You got the nerve to stand there with your stupid face hanging out to telling me my girl is still ain't good enough for you? No, Pasquale. It's just the other way around. She's a too good for me now. Goodbye. Now wait, wait, Luigi. Wait. Well, Pasquale, that's too bad. You made a noble experiment come out. 
And never have I seen so much done to... So much. <laughs> How do you like that? My Frankenstein, a backfire on me. Uh, one moment, Mr. Pasquale. I have something more important than mere dancing on my mind. All right, Mr. College. What do you got on your mind? Well, to put it bluntly, I am enamored of your daughter. What? Yes. Nobody's gonna enamel of my daughter. <laughs> what are you talking about? After all, what she just learned, she can easily forget. But if I marry her, she will always remember. He wishes to become Mr. Pasquale. <laughs> what? I want to marry your daughter, sir. You wanna get out of here, you, 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 you mouse, you? Mouse? Beat it, go on and get out. <laughs> I'm going to give you a paver. Come in. What are you going to do? Wait till I get my shoe off and I get down over my knee. Oh, Papa! Papa! Hey, oh. What's that? Huh? I'm going to give you this fancy car. I threw out of my money for that, huh? Hey, hey what's this? I'm here. That sounds like the old boss. Oh, Papa's job, you're ruining your shoe. <laughs> I'm a thought that you was laughing. Did you hear that, Papa? He thought I was laughing. <laughs> no, so stop with the laughing. Luigi came back, and now you're going to chase him out again. No, no, Pasquale. Now I'm going to see the old Rosa again. And this Rosa, I'm going to take her to the dance. What? Are you taking her? That's making me laugh. Luigi. <laughs> Luigi, I'm going with you. Oh! <laughs> no, wait a minute. It's, I'm the one who should have laughed. Rosa, I'm going with you. <laughs> well, Mamma Mia, I'm a took Rosa to the dance after all. And everything is turned out very nice, except for one thing. Just like I'm expected, while I was dancing with Rosa, she's a fall down on me. <laughs> right away, Rosa's start to laugh. Everybody is a laugh with her. And when I take the plaster off of my chest, I'm going to laugh too. <laughs> you love the son, Luigi Vasco, Lily McGrath. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they want to remind you to include delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum on your shopping list this week. Wrigley's Spearmint is an ideal treat to bring home to your family. It's healthful, it's inexpensive, and it's a taste treat that everyone enjoys and appreciates. Pass Wrigley's Spearmint Gum around after meals. Give some to the children when they come home from school. And enjoy it yourself whenever you want something good to chew on that isn't rich or heavy. Next time you go to the store, remember to get a few packages of refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to listen next week at this time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his Mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi is a Cy Howard production and is directed by Norman MacDonald. Mac Benoff writes the script with Lou Dermott. J. Carol Nash is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Connery as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Ship as Miss Falding, Joel Forte as Horowitz, Ken Peters as Olsen, and Sidney Miller as the Duke. Music was directed by Lud Glasgow. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.